Alrighty. Welcome everyone. Daryl as a service here from Modern Workplace Scenarios. Uh, I'm going to start doing a, a bit of um, live streaming to just go through some of the things about how I do what I do. Um, so this is not going to be rehearsed. I'm going to completely wing it. I don't know who's going to tune in and, and check it out, but today I wanted to go over um, some things that uh, I've been able to do from an iPad for a while. Um, I like to try and produce videos uh, directly from phone and from iPad and you know when I can I'll, I'll uh, do it using Premiere Pro from a, a laptop um, but yeah I thought I'd go through a bit of my workflow and, and what I did today. Um, uh, Alicia and I we went to a cool little spot just up the road where supposed to be still in uh, COVID confinement at the moment um, where we're uh, we're allowed to go for a, a walk as long as it's close to home. Um, we can, because where we live, we're, we're able to uh, enjoy a, a few other things that people uh, can't because it's within close range. And there's some good places to, to take photos and do a bit of video. So I wanted to go over some of these things um, with uh, some of the people. I just want to check and see. I'm going to do this on Twitch as well. So I just want to see if this is coming through. Looks good to me, looks good to me, that's cool. Um, so getting into it, uh, what I like to use, uh, my kit is all about using the iPhone. Uh, now I, I'd switched from Windows Phone back in I think about 2014 to iPhone and I've been bitten since then, right? So uh, I found it to be very capable, tons of apps and as I started to, to work uh, more within my... Um, my comfort zone I started to find different apps that I could produce video go live streaming and the like so iPhone 11 Pro um, I also have an iPad Pro which I got uh, a few years back when um, I thought I was going to be giving my Surface Pro up and uh, I got the iPad Pro handed over the Surface Pro and started to get into the capabilities there with sketching and stuff so I tend to take a lot of video with the iPhone and um, I use Filmic Pro and I'm not going to go through how I use that today I just want to show you some of the things that I began to do using uh, the uh, the iPad Pro for editing so I've used AirPlay to get my video over to the iPad Pro and uh, really starting with a few videos from here onwards yeah right down to the last one there um, there's a, a few there that I want to put together in a bit of a sequence and I'm also going to be continuing to think how do I make sure that it's below um, the time of about sort of a minute, minute 30 and if you're sharing this on Twitter, 2 minutes 20ish <laughs> to make sure that it's something that's watchable and easy to just consume from, uh, from uh, social media. I might go through a few things too uh, about how to um, change the format so that you might uh, use it for different platforms. Um, but it also depends on how long you want to how long you want to have that video and whether you're going portrait or landscape. Nice to see a few people there joining me. So uh, let me know if you if you're uh, wanting to ask a few questions. I am watching the chat. I'm using a service called Restream, so hopefully the comments will all come through and together in one place. <laughs> um, let's have a look at that. Uh, so, uh, well, let's go with let's go with working with us. So, I will do a few tutorials around other apps that I use, but today's one is all going to be about LumaFusion. Uh, sorry, not LumaFusion, Video Leap. Video Leap is a pretty cool app. Um, it's it's really quite capable. It's it's what I use generally to get quick social videos done. And I've been able to create a, a whole lot of stuff on here, working with GIFs as well and various things. Hey, Alex, nice to, nice to have you join uh, via YouTube. Um, so if I'm looking at uh, LumaFusion, firing it up, it's... Uh, Go to our app store and check it out to begin with. LumaFusion, uh, sorry, Video Leap. I keep <laughs> saying the wrong one. Video Leap, come on. Video Leap. I'm using a bridge keyboard. Right, so here we go. Video Leap. Um, I am using the Pro version. I have uh, paid a 
an annual fee to, to get a hold of this because I do find it's just so useful. Very, very capable app. Um, so that's it. You'll find it in the App Store. I'm not sure if it's supported across the Android um, various apps. Um, don't spend a lot of time in Android, but not to say that I, that I won't in future. Um, and Video Leap, here it is. When you fire it up for the first time, it's going to take you through to that new project screen. So this is what it'll look like empty space and across the iPad Pro it's great because you can see all the tools available. You will be able to use the same app from your iPhone. So some of the things that I create when I'm on the road at an event trying to share a few clips uh, live video so to speak or, or um, live tweeting then I might capture a few videos and string them all together. So we've got our we've got our blank project um, and it's going to pick up based on the first video that you drop in here, what canvas size you want to use. But if you wanted to set that to begin with, you can tap the canvas size here and into format. And uh, you've got a few various different canvas sizes that I might use a bit later on to show you how to repurpose some of this content for Instagram, for TikTok, for whatever. Um, but my videos, I usually take them landscape, so you'll always see my content in 16 by nine to begin with. And then I'll start using um, yeah, various different portrait orientations or Instagram. So um, let's get back to adding some content. Now this is going to dip into your, of course, your photo app, and it's it's uh, I've taken things here and uploaded them generally in order as I've airplayed them across. So I might just uh, I know that there's a few here that I I did like. We'll just compare those two to begin with. There's uh, a few. Um, lenses that I like to use with with my iPhone and I'm look I'm a bit of a nut right I really do like to take all sorts of content and let's just flick over here for this full view so I use the moment set of um, apps uh, sorry uh, hardware so this is a, a moment case um, this case allows me to snap on some lenses or oh, that's in focus now here so once I put that on the phone I've got um, two lenses that I can drop into here uh, in those positions for the wide angle lens and the, um, the zoom lens. Um, the, the ultra wide lens um, doesn't fit, they, they don't make lenses to fit over the top of that. So just that the case is shaped so that it will, there we go, it's in, in focus there. I can attach the lens to the wide and the zoom, but not the ultra wide. And so I, I've uh, got into using these lenses for various different shots. Um, so this this lens has a what was it 58 millimeter lens, right? So this is the lens that I used for get that in focus here. Come on, here we go. Uh, used for for this first shot on the on my clip, right? So this is I'm trying to get this zoom where I've I've got it focused in the foreground. It's showing a bit of the ground there, and as I step into it and I run away. I've got that in slow-mo, so I go out of focus in the background. So that, uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um, I've got a few other bits and pieces here that I'll show in other videos as well, my full kit. But that I, I used a, a Joby Gorilla Pod, just a basic one here. Stretched that out. I had the, the phone so that to try and get it as low to the ground as possible, I made sure that the lenses were down on the bottom end of this and then flip that up over here. Yeah, I'm using OBS to go live now. That is correct, Alex. Um, so it's OBS, oops, and I'm using a service called Restream. Um, so if I, if I was smart, I would have had my affiliate link plastered all over my stream so you would have found it, but thanks for asking. Um, right, so we've got that. that we've got the, uh, the footage. Let's uh, flick on back to our our iPad. Right, so this is uh, the first two videos I've selected there. I know that I took a couple of shots and I'm just going to look at them and see uh, whether they fit my purpose. So I'll just add them to the project. And now based on the order that you've put or you've selected them, that's how they're going to appear in the project. And this means that um, if I, I'll just flick that over there, if I um, had chosen them in a different order, then you're going to get the, f the second one first, the first one second. Now, at the bottom of our screen where we chose uh, the different orientation, um, let's just tap those arrows back to get back to our various tools. 
we've got our videos in the timeline and you can see the bit there where that second video is attached now of course I haven't edited any of it yet so I'm going to be trimming things with you so I'll show you how this works uh, but I also filmed this in I think it was I think it was 48 frames per second and set it so that it would play back in 24 so it is a slow-mo but it's not super slow um, and it still adheres to that 24 frames per second uh, frame rate. So if I play that through regularly, let's just get up to about here. You can see how I, I'm just running my finger along the uh, timeline and I can scrub through. So that's another cool thing about this too, is if I just, um, I'm just swiping along the screen and lifting my, my finger up, it actually, slows right down and lets me scrub through this really nicely so if i can okay so i'm looking at that video that's let's just see if 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 um we give about a second before my foot appears in the shot now i'm wanting to work with that first clip so i'll tap the clip and that gives me a couple of drag handles i can see that currently the video is also set to one times speed um, and as I've tapped that clip, I now have context aware tools. They pop up because I can see um, I'm working with the video. So I've got filters, I can change all sorts of other bits and pieces there, and I'll use them as I, as I go through this video. Um, let's drag that handle over. Now the cool thing about this, doing this on an iPhone, not so much in the iPad Pro, but when you drag those handles, it uses the uh, the haptic feedback, right? So as I'm dragging them through, if I want to align it with another clip or the, the playhead, which is that red line, then I can get that haptic feedback. As soon as the, the video aligns with it, it snaps to the other video or it snaps to um, the playhead and I can feel it. So it, it lets me know that I've hit that space. So that's really cool. Right, we've got about a second, I think. Here, let's just play this through at slow-mo. Yep, so that plays on through. So what I like about this one is that it, it has more of the foreground um, in focus. You'll see in my second video that what I've tried to do in the second one is capture a bit more of the forest and background there. So I angled it up a bit, but it didn't quite have the same level of focus. So I quite like this one. That one kind of works out there. All right. So that's that's my first clip, quite like that. What about this one? So this one is more about getting a bit more of that forest there, and I thought that I might also use the the return as I walk back towards the camera to see if. Um, hey Daniel, I'm on a live stream. <laughs> it's my son. It's all right, Daniel. It's all right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was going to use this this um, footage here as I return back to the camera and and see how that goes. Maybe use that as a as a closeout. So that one I could use probably too. Right now, as we're working with these clips, maybe I don't want to use this one, so I can press and hold it, and this means I can drop it here to turn it to a separate layer, or drag it down to the uh, the bin, or if I've got other clips there, I can change the order of it. Right, so I could drop that in up there. And now that becomes something else that I can use an overlay. Um, so I've selected that second clip and I could now press and hold what looks like that teardrop and drag that along. So now you're seeing two videos and I might use those layers creatively. I'm not gonna do that. That's getting a bit confusing with the same video. So let's go with that second clip and just drag that up to about there. If you're wanting to get it really precise in terms of your timeline, you can touch the screen with, whoops, with two fingers here, down on the screen, pinch zoom, and you'll notice that the time scale pushes out to, um, actually quite a lot really. I can push it right out to this, and that means that it's literally frame by frame. So if we played that through, crazy you can't see the time frame right but <laughs> if I go back that's letting me to be real precise in terms of frames that I might want to edit there
right so that's just crazy 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 close i don't need it to be that close i want it to be about there so tap drag that handle over that snaps to the playhead and that's cool that's what i want right in on through sweet bit long for a, a clip though but that's all right um now what I'm going to do here is rather than um, trying to drag the other end to make it fit, uh, I've still got the clip selected and I'm going to use the split button. Now that's at the far end of our uh, toolbar beside mixer, hit split, and now it becomes two clips. And to get rid of this one, and I might repurpose it later, but um, let's just drag that into the bin. So we have, oops. I <laughs> hit the undo button there. So that's the other thing you can do, of course, you can undo what you've done. But um, we've got that clip there, so that's fine. Okay, next next video, next bit that I'm going to add to this timeline. This clip here was uh, just playing around a bit with hopping around on rocks and, and in and out of focus. Now, yeah, it does a funny thing sometimes here on the timeline. I don't know whether it's a bug of the app or whether it's because I'm trying to display it and share it with you on screen now. Uh, but you'll notice back in my clip where I should be able to see some preview of the different frames of that video that I've just added. It's just this transparent thing, oh, so that's kind of weird. But anyway, we've got some footage here because it took me a while to sort of get over and take my time over the rocks. I'm going to use maybe this and again I'll tap on that video use the split button and then I'll drag out the content that I didn't want it's a pity about that oh there we go some of our preview come in up there it was just a bit long that's fine so this one's not going to be in not going to be uh, um, in slow-mo it's it's just going to play through at normal speed so if we just watch that goes through here and not not a fluid transition because I'm not running away in that first shot from the path and all of a sudden I'm on rocks but that's all good now two two clips together do I want it to be just a hard cut where it goes between that scene and that scene could do or if you want to use a transition, you'll tap on that little button between the two clips. And that gives you a choice of a bunch of transitions that you can use. So you could go for subtle, you could go for a bit dramatic with zoom, um, sliding things and wiping things out. That's all good, okay. Um, but I'll uh, probably just go with dissolve. Yep, that's cool. So it gives you that preview of what this looks like. If I wanted to try zoom out, for example, it will show me that. So that's nice. Um, good advice around here that I've I've heard, uh, and you probably get this too with things like presentations, is you don't have to keep changing up your zooms, uh, sorry, your transitions to everything fancy that you can find. So it's good to pick one or two, especially ones that give you that that sense of what you're trying to do with your scene. Um, and and they actually help to give you that same feel as your, your change between clips. Uh, the other thing that we can do here, we're, while we do have the uh, transition chosen, is we can lengthen how long that transition goes for. So that's what our little slider is above the different transition choices. If we as we drag that, you can see the diagonal black line between the clips lengthens and changes how long and you can see just above the slider to the length of time that that transition will go for um, so if we made it a bit longer then it will look a little like this interesting I'm just going to keep it short and snappy really we'll keep it just about uh, a second so that'll be fine all right so the other thing I'm going to do here uh, just tap back a bit is I don't want to necessarily play out this whole clip. I'm going to do a few jump cuts here. Um, and I want to let it play for about a, a second or two and then jump and then get to that next bit that I want to show in the same clip. So it will, it will try and pace this video rather than it just being this thing you see me hopping around on rocks and 
I am being quite careful because there's moss on them and I didn't want to slip. <laughs> so um, let's just play through this. How do I want this to look? So we'll take the first one, two. Maybe it will let me complete that step. And then we'll use split again. We'll tap the clip here on the timeline, hit split. And then we'll let it play ahead. One, two, maybe go back a bit here. And we'll split it again. And drag that piece out. So that's how it will, it will just sort of play through as it jumps over. Oop, yep, that's all right. And then what I'm going to try and show here is just my return back to going on the rocks. Um, and that's the part that I want to speed up and change the pace of because I was really quite cautious making my way over these rocks here at this stage. So we'll just figure out where we want to cut this. That looks kind of dramatic. Split. And we'll make, make it jump from here. Drag that out and jump. Yeah, so that's cool. We'll have that one step there. Another split. I want to capture that step again. See, the steps are quite uh, more more about an action there. Are you using the iPad to do editing as shown on the screen? Yes. Uh, if I could take my camera off its mount and point it down. Um, I'd show you there might be some time where I might do an overhead shot um, But yes, I'm doing the iPad As shown on the screen. Yeah, I hopefully I do make it look easy if you've got an iPad or an iPad Pro man um, Do recommend video leap uh, as one of your video editing apps So we'll tap there. We'll just make a few more changes and What have I got here it jumps from here to that's the step I wanted to gab so I'm going to take that clip Drag, drop, okay, so that sort of jumps to there, and then we'll, this is still feeling a bit too slow, this is where I actually jump across, so we'll split that there, push that out, how does that play through, gets me there, boom, and then we'll just run off. Cool. Split. Get rid of that clip. All right. Let's see that play through. So from that transition. Okay. So it'll jump a bit. Jump a bit. If I was getting pedantic, I'd probably make sure these jumps were regular intervals. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I'd want that that particular clip there all together to be max seven seconds. That's sort of want to keep that pace going. Haven't really chosen the music for this yet, so we'll see. We'll see. Okay, what's what's next? Um, yeah, so an interesting shot here where I was trying to get the angle of uh, looking through some ferns uh, to some other ferns in the background, and then going up so that it gives a nice refraction from the, the sun coming through the forest. So we'll tap on this 11 seconds one. And, ah, oh, that's right, yeah, so it was portrait this one. Hmm, how can I purpose this? Well, this, this gives me an opportunity to, to show you at least how I might um, take something that was taken in portrait, because I wanted to get that length thing and I was imagining the clip to be potentially used for um, TikTok or, or Instagram. Um, so to frame this up, I've selected the clip. You can see the red lines around it so I know that I'm working with that and the rest of that black part is the background of my project uh, which if I wanted to we could go back to here and where we're in canvas we can change the color of the background or, or even have a, a video in the background and blur something. But anyway, back to this. Chosen our clip and to resize it so that we can uh, make it use more of that 16 by nine, um, this is where we use transform. So fourth button along, 
tap transform and we've got a, a few buttons here that are going to make it quick for us to to size this up let's use fill okay and fill's going to fill the screen uh, now imagine that if i can do this imagine that you're you've got your full sort of portrait mode of that video is now completely off your canvas and so just imagine that it's this strip but you're only seeing the 16 by 9 view of that so what i'm going to do is i'll try and drag this up and we'll use a keystone or key what do i call it keystone will do keyframe keyframe <laughs> we'll use keyframing to 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 um give some motion in there with the clip itself so that we can show a bit more of what's going on in it. Um, right, so where do I want this to start? Um, if we go back, drag our picture up and down, so you can see it does have the full picture. You notice here too, as I drag this around, it tends to snap between it, it finds the midpoint so that I can center it into my canvas. And if I drag this up a bit more, somewhere around here it'll show the, the mid, there you go, midpoint of the canvas again, but for the full clip itself. Um, so, probably to keep it interesting, it's going to look a bit grainy, right? Because it was done as, it's done as a, 16 by 9 it was more like 9 by 16 and there we go snap all right now i might actually not use keyframes because it's already it's already uh i've already used the motion as i've filled it uh separate question from alex uh, how to project your ipad to obs because i don't see your hand or fingers touching the ipad yeah um that's right. Uh, what I'm using for projecting to the iPad, uh, projecting the iPad to my screen, is an application called Air Server, um, and that will support um, AirPlay, Miracast, a few other things as well. Those are the two that I generally use. And with OBS, what I'm using is a second monitor, and for my scenes, I'm capturing that as a whole display so that I can get the whole um, Air Server view of things on screen. Ah, oh, just I'm sort of trying to imagine where, what sort of background you've got, Alex, and, and the sorts of things that you work in. So, yeah, probably do some similar things to me. Right, so with our video, we've got, and it's probably a way for me to change Air Server and it shows the, the touch marks as I'm touching the screen. I'm not sure. But anyway, we've got, let's see, we'll go through from here. So that I've actually manually, as I'm filming this, I'm, I've motioned the, the clip itself. So that's probably good enough from there. Did I get no? So this was this was a clip where I didn't actually try and capture the refraction of the sun up on the corner there. So that's fine. That's enough there for me. Now I don't want that to be there for too long. Let's. Let's show you another thing that you can do when you're you're dragging the, the clips here. Um, so I've showed you how to split a clip and drag things out. Another one that you can use if you're wanting to just make a small adjustment um, is you push your finger on the end of the beginning of the clip, press and hold, and you can drag that. And again, it'll snap to that playhead where you want it to start. All right, so it has taken my changes. And we'll play that through. All right. And there. So I'll do that again from the, the end of the clip. I'm going to press and hold on the arrow at the end of the clip. Drag that through. It snaps to the playhead. And we've got seven seconds of play there. Right. Next clip. Um, we had something here where there was a bit of moss on rock. And I was trying to change up from looking at that and up into the uh, background all right so let's uh jump in here add that clip all right so let's just scrub through this and show you 
So it goes up and shows the houses in the background. So we'll probably drag that through to here and get that to start from there. Play. Uh, now it's a bit long. Let's start from about here. Cool. And there. All right. So generally, if you've got a clip that's that's longer than seven seconds or more, you've got to have a good reason to have um, it just hang in there. Maybe someone's telling a story or you're actually trying to capture some of the action. But if you're stringing together a sequence and you're trying to get that pacing going, keeping that interest going, um, then seven seconds is a, is a good length. And you probably already know this, but when you're filming, you're going to capture more than that so that you can trim it as you've seen me do so now. Um, this next one, what I was trying to do is just show a bit of motion as I was going through the forest uh, and I set it to the ultra wide lens on the iPhone. So that uh, gives you that feel just like you get with the GoPro where it's a bit more forgiving with what you see um, because it's not so focused on, on one frame. It's got that fisheye feel to it and um, it's a bit easier to watch than, than if it was zoomed up. So I wanted to show just me stepping through a few things. Quite like going through that rock there. So we'll just use the split method this time. Drag and drop. And how much do we play with this? One, two, three, four. Ooh, that's still quite a bit of motion, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe we could use a, a bit of slow motion here just to make that a bit easier on the on the eyes right so this is how we can uh, slow down did you only use the iPhone yeah totally Alex I did use just the iPhone for this um, again I've, I've chosen a few apps that allow me to um, actually I think I've got that same app here I've used Filmic Pro for this so it allows me to uh, let's just find it Filmic Pro boom this is going to look a little funny. So you're seeing a picture of my desk through the, through the lens um, on the back there. Um, Filmic Pro is pretty cool. Uh, don't know if this is actually coming through. It says dial down that noise just in case it's playing through on the stream. Um, lots of different options to be able to change up the way that the camera operates. Um, I was using frame rates to, to change from slow-mo but how fast I wanted it to play back so generally I like to have um, let's just go back to playback about 24 frames per second and then um, when I was trying to actually that's how we do it tap there to do it quickly and then drag that down to about oops 60 48 maybe yeah, so that gives you twice half as half speed. Yeah, so it gives you that slow motion, but it still will play through as a 24 frames per second. Um, and a lot of people talk about that when they're talking about preferring to film in a certain frame rate. 24 frames per second is generally it's quite close to what your eyes um, see in terms of refresh rate. Uh, if you can call the refresh rate for your eyes. We see in 24 frames per second, but 30 frames per second seems a bit smoother. Um, and I like to sort of bring it back so you've got that nice motion blur. Anyway, so Filmic Pro, um, that's for another live stream, another video, I would say. Let's go back to our video leap. Um, yep, so what we're going to do, we're going to choose this clip and we're going to change the speed up on this clip just to slow it down a bit. Um, so with the clip chosen, um, you'll see beside our transform button, we've got a speed button, looks like a speedometer. And once we've chosen that, we've got a slider that we can use to either speed it up or slow it down. So let's just bump that down to, it's now going to be a 22 second clip. Hmm, not really wanting that. Let's do it at half speed. 
if I can talk about this too, it's one thing to fix it in post in terms of how, how fast or slow you're going to record something, but um, to rather to play it out. But it's better to try and get that speed right, set right, when you're filming it because um, this is all just adjustments digitally, right? It's a bit like the difference between a real lens and a lens with digital zoom. Um, so if I'm adjusting the speed, it's going to look a little choppy if I try and get um, to make too much of an adjustment. So let's play this through. It's a bit slower, yeah, and it does feel a bit drifting. All right. I might make a few people sick, actually. I might just stick that back to times one speed. What does that look like? All right, I'm going to be lazy and call this an action shot. <laughs> I'm not going to change the speed up, but I showed you how, all right? And just giving you that tip that if you are going to try and slow things down, think about that when you're wanting to, if you deliberately want to slow things down, then think about trying to film that um, and set that in your camera. What else have we done here? So we've got a couple of shots here. I, I do like... Um, trying to show with a wide angle, ultra wide angle lens, um, forest canopy and looking through to, to blue skies. So if we add this one in, we're not going to use the full. Yeah, shall we go into spinning? Let's do that. So we'll, as I filmed this, I, I began to turn here. All right, so I'm going to clip here and we'll probably just play four to five seconds of that one. Probably would have been better on a gimbal. Not very smooth, but that's all right. Drag and drop. Okay. Next. Um, hmm. What was that one? What was that one? Oh, yeah, that's right. So I was coming over excitedly to try and show my wife, oh, look what I've, look what I've filmed so far. What have I put together? And, and I think I distracted her at just the wrong moment. She was trying to wait for the sun to come up through the trees. Um, and at a certain point, it was going to just refract and, and show through nicely through the, through the forest. Um, and because I distracted her, uh, she looked up like, oh, I missed my moment. So I thought, okay, I can do this for you. Drop on a filter um, and then try and angle and go through the, the canopy or rather the, the forest foliage to try and get that nice light refraction here. So that's what I'm trying to go for is that lens flare. Let's go back here a bit. Split. Drag that down. Alright, so what does this look like? Play through. Flare. Does it disappear at some point? Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll just leave that to. There's something I like about um, this way of editing clips as well. If I push and hold the end of that clip and drag it out. Notice at the top, oh crap. <laughs> I told you the story and I was starting to edit things but I didn't flick back to, um, Alex, why didn't you tell me? Come on, man. <laughs> um, as we're back to, yeah, all right. So what I like about editing with 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 uh, Video Leap is that there's little hints and things that make it really easy for me to judge how long is a clip and how long do I want it to show. And if you look at the top right-hand corner of this clip with the, the flare through the canopy, um, is I can drag this handle out and you'll see the number changes to reflect the number of seconds that are left there. <laughs> no, no, oh. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, for hanging in there anyway. I hope it's interesting to you. Um, so I wanted to try and show that lens flare right there. And then maybe just push that out to five seconds. So as it changes to five, then I know roughly it's about there. It's going to play through for five. Nice. Okay, next clip. 
This one I had a bit of fun with. Um, it is another app that Filmic Pro made, um, and it works really well with the iPad, sorry, the iPhone 11 Pro. Um, it is called Double Take, and it lets you choose to use two of your three lenses at the same time. Um, so what I managed to do here is as we sort of hung this using the the Joby Gorilla Pod, I wrapped this around a tree and then timed it so that my wife and I could just sort of jump into shot. So that's a bit goofy. I wanted to just leave that there and drag that to there. So that'll play. There should be a bit of a pause and then we just drop in. Maybe we'll just do that just as a nice transition. How does that play through? Do, 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 do. Yeah, there's a point. I just realized too, as I'm doing this, I think the audio is playing through. Is it playing through the Air Server app? And it might be being picked up through here in the in the speakers. Maybe. No, not seeing that. Let's just quickly just check something in OBS. Oh, interesting. Okay. I do have that audio turned up. Oh well. We won't be able to play the audio through from the clip. I'll have to figure that out for the next time we do a live stream. How long have we been going here? 41 minutes. Dude. Um... We've got another clip here. So there was a, another lens that I have for the, the moment case. Um, it is a macro lens. And there's a couple of things I wanted to just show that if I'm spending a bit of time somewhere like this in the forest, it's not just about the angles and the things and the light, but I also wanted to show the little things. That's why I got the macro lens, so that I could show a bit of the textures and the things like bark and pine needles and, and various things like that. So... I think it was this third shot that I liked the best for that. Um, there was this other one here with moss on the bark. And uh, no, that was a bit jumpy. I think it was this one that I quite liked. So we'll go with the, the needles and the other one with the moss on the rock. So we'll add all three to the project. We'll scrub through and just find that point where what I did was I, I got my lens on my phone. And I mean, imagine that this was the the bark, and I kind of pivoted around like that. And that's something you can do with with a you know a phone case is that those two pivot points as you're holding it. Imagine that this is your line that your the subject is is right there with a the macro lens. Let's just put the macro lens on quickly. Do 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 do. This one, uh, it's a flat little lens. I tend to put these lenses on, then take the cover off, but maybe that's not so cool for the case. So the, the lens is on. And then there's this little cover here that still allows light to come through, but it refracts it. There's a, I don't know what you call that, sort of frosting, but it's plastic anyway. That sits on over the top, and that is a 10X macro lens. Nice, thank you moment. And what I was doing with it um, for this shot and for a couple of others was I would pivot around it. So I'd I'd have it against maybe some moss that was right here on the on the bark, and I just pivot it around like that. So I can do that with the motion. All right. So if you trust yourself and you, you practice a bit, then that is a cool technique. Lens away. All right, so back to. Thank you for reminding me, Alex. I you didn't even use it. Yeah, no, I didn't use a, game, a gimbal. Um, part of that is stabilization within the phone. Um, so the phone itself has stabilization. There's also stabilization within the app, and I think you have to turn one or the other off because stabilization trying to stable itself with. You can imagine. 
two two technologies trying to stabilize it, it gets a bit crazy i do have a gimbal um but i only use that for certain types of shots so i just i just used the joby gorilla pod and then this cool thing from manfrotto um so that fits nicely within my americans call it fanny pack i call them belt bags um but that flips around here and here and here and here onto the tripod and then just twisting that little dial there will allow me to drop the phone in push it down twist and we're done All right so similar kind of thing with those techniques i think this is why i like the the joby gorilla pods um for i guess adaptability but i mean also grip right yeah, look at that grip my fingers are fitting nicely between these different slots here so as i'm holding that i've got a nice firm grip um but what i can do with this is also use the the three arms to my or three legs i should say to my advantage if i was wanting to pivot off one of these or two of these I'll just flip this around and then make those the two touch points and then it's just about using this back leg to to pivot things so you can get quite a stable shot oh all sorts of tips alex what are you doing man <laughs> um there we go right so on with this i'm going to pivot in from here because what i wanted to do is have a bit of that out of focus uh, bokeh if you can call it bokeh with a macro lens um so that shows some of the background and we'll drag those handles up to here and pivot onto the tree so that shows some of the bark and some things that are up close i'm going to just pause there oh i'm glad man i'm glad um glad you could join um we've got our pine needles so that was just an up and close one don't think i was trying to show anything here except doing a macro flyover <laughs> um so i think it started about there let that play through yeah that's cool that's enough and then this one is one that i quite liked because as i pivoted around to capture the the moss up close on this rock i also continued over and then it started to show like an inverted view of of what was behind me but you wouldn't know it because it's way out of focus so where does that start to pivot about there okay I'll just drag that over. Okay, so we'll let that play through. Yeah. Rip. Probably find some nice transitions in between some of these clips to to make this fit nicely. But what are we up to? That's so. Here's the other thing I'm looking at. Um, along the top of that timeline, you can see one minute 19 seconds so as i look at that i know that i'm aiming usually at a minute for instagram um and so i'm thinking like would i like to purpose it there uh, stop it there and, and hold with that or am i going to make this a bit longer and then just trim it a, a bit later to try and make it fit to the different platforms and formats so we'll just keep adding a bit a few things here and there and then we'll trim it out had this fun shot here with my wife I'm, i might just leave her out of it but we found this tree where it was uh, just yeah bent it grew that way um bit of fun um so yeah we we're trying to have a bit you know like bending the tree and it somehow it captured her uh finishing off with a couple of shots we uh found a, a different path just up behind the the small forest area and this has a view of mount wellington 
So that's just a, a panning view across stone fields. It's quite a long one, though. Eh? It's 21 seconds. Maybe I'll finish on that one. So we'll just bump this back over here. Now, the last thing that I'll show you here is I'm adding another um, clip into the, the timeline is that where I have my playhead, it's going to add the clip. Um, so I'm going to add my last clip here to the timeline and we'll, we'll, we'll just finish with that, that pano that sort of fades out. i add that to the project and you can see it, it adds my clip that I've just tapped into before the pano that I wanted. Now it's this one here, what do I do with this one? All right, so that was just playing around with different focuses. In Filmic Pro, you can tap it into a mode where you can use a, a focus rocker on the side of the video. Um, again, I'll cover that off in a tutorial at some point, but that rocker allows me to um, change the focus and play around with that. And I think I did that a few times in this clip, and what I like was the, the part near the end here. So I think my third attempt was the one that I, I liked the best. Yeah, that one. All right, so we'll give that probably about that much time. Drag that down. And let's see that playthrough. So we go from that close focus to focusing on that little flower in the background. And that's the same, which has quite a nice transition there. It's the same flower that's in the bush in front of me for that pano shot. So that's cool. We'll probably start from here, about there. Because when I'm filming things like that for panos and for things, I, I'm got it recording, that's cool, got it steady, and now I'll start doing my shot. So there's usually about a second or two at least at the beginning of my shot, which I want to trim off because that's just me getting all set up, getting oriented right, I'm ready to start filming. Yeah, so that sort of plays out through, and what does that make the clip? About a minute and 44. That's still going to fit inside a, a tweet video, um, but I think that's I think that's too long for an Instagram video. So maybe let's see the speed that this plays through. If I sped that clip up, it's going to look wrong. You don't want to get the a clip like this to be really jumpy when it's a, a nice pano as it flips around. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's fine. So that's that's the full project. If we tap that replay button at the top, goes on through. Got a bit of slow mo there. I'll do a few odd looking jump cuts through here, which aren't really that regular in terms of beats. Um, like I said, if I was a bit pedantic, I might stop there and go, I'm going to make sure that this one's only two seconds long. So let's do that. Let's do that. Can get a general idea based on the size of the clip. So that goes from there to there. I really want probably. That's probably going to look a bit better in terms of timing. Change, change 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 oh not really much of a difference oh that's fine we'll let that play through trying to decide whether i should have a few different transitions in here i think we'll just leave it as as jump cuts maybe drop in a, a fade or two maybe that could be one there use a dissolve dissolve for that one just where it goes through things that are less about action and more about just showing things. Um, so this one is transitioning through to a bit of action. All right, and then we'll play that through. How's it looking? Yep. Okay, that's good. Bit of lens flare, nice. Bit of fun, cool. 
some macro shot here of the bark on the tree and uh, this is where I want to use a, a nice fade um, dissolve or fade we'll use dissolve again be consistent yep that looks right play on from there and we'll do the same between that macro as well yep so that's the right place to use uh, a nice subtle dissolve change in scene because it means that I can yeah yeah that's cool right and then maybe we'll just transition from that with dissolve as well great okay and just being consistent dissolve again yeah so that plays through so now that i look through it well how that took us about 40 minutes or so plus a bit of talking um Oh, thanks, Alex. <laughs> yeah, look, it's surprising how many of these things can be created from just an iPad. Um, there have been various movies where they've deliberately uh, boasted, filmed on, their, filmed on their iPhone and produced that way. Um, so, yeah, there is a lot of things that you can do um, directly from these, these devices. And that's, that's something I've always tried and challenge myself to do is what can I do more on the spot and um, I know that if you spent a lot of time you did color correction you went all fancy and you spent some time with um, Premiere Pro or Final Cut then you could you could make this look really mint but um, we're in a forgiving age where we can put some of these things together and uh, as long as we're using some variety and we're giving a bit of thought into terms of what we're composing in there then it still makes for something quite interesting um, Right, so the catch with some of this thing as I'm finishing it off is I do like to fade to black. Uh, and it's one thing that with with um, Video Leap that you, you don't have an easy way of doing that when you're just working off the main photos or videos from your timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it about here and then we'll tap that last clip and we turn it into something called a mixer. That's something I'll save for a, another live stream or episode uh, at another point. But by changing it to a mixer clip, um, it allows me to use, if you look at the bottom again, I've got the, the clip chosen. It's now, I can drag that, oops, drag that over the top of the video and that's how you can use mixer is you can overlay some things on top of it like, um, Go back over here just to show you a bit. We'll work with mixes later. I can have like a picture in picture, or um, I can have multiple clips or overlaid and showing things. And that could be a photo, it could be a video, whatever. But let's put that back to how it was in terms of size. We'll hit the transform button, click fill, and I want to use. There we go, it snaps to there. I want to use the ability to animate this mixer clip so i'm using the animation button that's the second from the right second from the left rather animation i'm going to animate the out part of that clip and i'm going to use fade out and just like we could with our transitions i can drag that slider to change um, how long that transition takes so that could be i'm just doing this for demonstration purposes We'll play that through. So as that plays through, you maybe we want that to be a bit longer. Yeah. At the end of a clip like this or end of a video, it's better to have a slightly longer fade out than something that you might be doing between scenes. Fade out for or fade to black is what I like to use when I'm trying to show the change of a, a scene completely um, so it might be going from we're driving in the car and then maybe we get to the location that we're in or maybe it's the end of the day and now we're going to a clip where we're doing a talking head and we're doing a bit of um, reflecting about the day then I might use a fade to black to show that deliberate uh, change in scene yeah so that's a nice way to finish it off um, I am going to complete this video and I'll post it up 
on uh, Twitter and probably we'll drop it into the YouTube channel as well just so that it's there as an example and you can pair the two up. Um, excuse me, so Alex you found me at, uh, at my video channel obviously because you're chatting with me here now via by YouTube, I haven't really seen anything there from Twitch, and it's not to say that there haven't been people chatting, it's just that I don't have, this is my first proper Twitch stream, so maybe there just hasn't been a lot of a lot of chatter going on there. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'll put the videos up there so that you can see the, the finished product. Um, I am going to add some music to it, but we'll save that for another tutorial, another live streaming episode. Um, because there's a few steps to go through and I want to show you a few things about how to make this easy for you when you're working from your iPhone or your iPad. Um, but for now, um, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, have a great day wherever you are, whenever you are. I have the saying that I say called good now, right now, wherever and whenever you are. It kind of covers the multiple time zones that people tend to tune in and, and check out my content. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks uh, for chatting with me, Alex. And for those that are catching this later, drop your comments below. Subscribe, like, all those other things that they usually say at the end of the episodes. <laughs> Bye for now.